Let's find the derivative of these functions using our definition of derivative. And our definition of the derivative says that the limit as h approaches zero of f of, we're going to say a plus h minus f of a all over h. And then when we have our x values, like right here, right here, those become the values that we put in for the a. So let's look at part a right here. So we're given f of x equals 4x squared minus x, and we're looking at x equaling 3. Well, x equals 3, that becomes our a value. So this is going to look like the limit as h approaches 0 of f of 3 plus h minus f of 3 all over h. So we need to do a little bit of figuring here. We need to figure out some information. First thing that we need is to figure out f of 3 plus h. So that means that we put 3 plus h in where we see x in our original equation. Is that real? Let's simplify that. 3 plus h squared, that means 3 plus h times 3 plus h. So if we multiply that through, we get 9 plus 6h plus h squared. Distribute your negative right here, we get minus 3 minus h. Keep cleaning, distribute this 4, that'll give us 36 plus 24h plus 4h squared minus 3 minus h. Clean it up a little bit more, and that's going to give us 33 plus 23h plus 4h squared. All right, now we need f of 3. f of 3 means we put 3 in where we had x before. So 4 times 3 squared minus 3. 4, well, 3 squared is 9. 4 times 9 is 36. So this will look like 36 minus 3, which is 33. All right, let's put it all together. So we have our f of 3 plus h. So this becomes the limit as h approaches 0. f of 3 plus h was 33 plus 23h plus 4h squared minus f of 3. f of 3 was 33. All over h. Let me color code this for a minute. So here's our 33. That was our f of 3. Here is our 33 plus 23h plus 4h squared. That was our f of 3 plus h. There we go. Now, when we work through trying to solve this, anything that does not have an h has to cancel. That's a tip. Anything that doesn't have an h has to cancel. So now we'll have the limit as h approaches 0. We have 23h plus 4h squared. We can factor an h out of that. So that'll leave us with 23 plus 4h all over h. More canceling. Now we can put in our zero without having any restrictions, without having any problems. But now we're going to evaluate our limit, so we don't need to write the limit anymore. So now we can put our zero in without any problems. So this will look like 23 plus 4 times 0, which will just give us 23. So our limit for this one is 23. Let's try part B. Part B is the same idea. So we're looking for the limit as h approaches 0. And this time, our negative 2 is going to be our a. So this is going to look like, well, our function name this time is a. So we can do a capital A. 
times negative two plus h minus our function name is a, so we'll do a capital A again. And then our little a right here is negative two all over h. And so we need to do some figuring. We need to figure out what a of negative two plus h equals. And we need to figure out what a of negative two equals. So let's try these one at a time. So a of negative two plus h, that'll look like four over, replace our u with our negative two plus h. There we go. And we need a of negative two. So that means we replace our u with negative two. Well, four over negative two is just negative two. So there we go. This one, four over negative two plus h, we can't really do anything with that. So we're just gonna leave it be. So now we have the limit as h approaches zero of our, let's color code it again. Here is our negative two plus h, and that gives us this, and that goes here. So that's going to look like negative four over, whoopsies, the negative goes on the two, not on the four. There we go. Negative two plus h minus a of negative two. Well, a of negative two in this case is negative two. So negative two all over h. So here is our a of negative two plus h. Here is our a of negative two. So we have everything filled in. So let's clean this up a little bit. Well, in order to clean this up, we're going to need to combine our fractions. So this will look like the limit as h approaches zero of negative four. I did it again. Let me put that four back on the two. There we go. Four over negative two plus h plus, and this will just become two over one, all over h. So now we need common denominator. So if we need a common denominator, that means that in this case, we're just going to use negative two plus h. So that means we have our denominator good on the left. So here we just need to multiply this one by negative two plus h and this one by negative two plus h. So that's going to make our numerator the limit as h approaches zero of four plus two times negative two plus h all over negative two plus h. Now we have our h in the denominator, we can make it h over one. So when we're looking at our complex fractions, we flip and multiply. So if we take our h over one right here and we flip it over, it becomes one over h. So we multiply it by one over h. So this becomes our flip and multiply step. Remember, this is multiplied together. So if it's helpful to put it in parentheses, you can do it like that. So this is going to look like our limit as h approaches zero. Let's clean up the top a little bit. We have four distribute right here, minus four plus two h all over h times negative two plus h. This four and this four are going to cancel. That will leave us with the limit as h approaches zero and the numerator will have two h and the denominator will have h times negative two plus h. h is cancel. Now we don't have any restrictions with putting in our h value of zero. So now we have taken care of having the zero in the denominator. So we can put in our zero value directly, which means we can evaluate our limit which means we do not need to write the limit anymore. So when we evaluate our limit, this will look like two over negative two plus zero, which will be two over negative two, which will simplify to negative one. So that means that our limit is going to be negative one. Part C, we are looking at 
the limit as h approaches zero. And we're looking at f of, in this case, our little a is one, one plus h minus f of one all over h. So we need to figure out each different piece. And so we need f of one plus h. So that's going to look like three, take out your x, put in your one plus h. Don't forget the squared. Four, take out your x, put in your one plus h. Now simplify this down. So if we're looking at one plus h squared, that's going to look like one plus two h plus h squared. Distribute the four, minus four, minus four h, and clean this up. And it looks like we will get negative one plus two h plus three h squared. Now we need to do the same thing. We need to find f of one. So I'll put that one right here, f of one. So that's going to look like three times one squared minus four times one. Three times one squared is three, minus four times one is four, looks like negative one. So let's put it all together. So we'll have the limit as h approaches zero. We have negative one plus two h plus three h squared minus one all over h. So I'll color code it for you. So here's the negative one that correlates to our f of one. And we are missing, be careful, there's our negative right there, but we're still subtracting. We're missing that subtraction. Be careful. And then here is our f of one plus h. And that goes here. Now, you know that you are missing that subtraction there, because remember, anything that doesn't have an h has to cancel. So add the opposite, and this becomes plus 1. There's no h on this one, and there's no h on this one. They have to cancel. So that's a good indicator if you are not able to cancel to go back and double check your signs. So you have our limit as h approaches 0. 2h plus 3h squared. We can pull an h out of that and become 2 plus 3h all over h. Now we can cancel our h, which means that we have eliminated the division by zero, which means that we do not need to write the limit anymore, and we can put in our zero where we see our remaining h. So that will equal two plus three times zero, which will give us two. So for this one, our limit is equal to two. Last one, part D. F of 3x squared minus 4x, find F prime of A. So when we're looking at this one, F prime right here, that means the derivative. That is our indication for our derivative. Now notice this is almost the same as what we had in the last one, but we have now A instead of the one. So if we follow down through our same process as we work it through, here we will have our limit as h approaches zero of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. So just like over here where we did the one plus h, we put the one plus h in, the one plus h in, now those ones are going to be replaced with the a's. So when we multiplied right here, we multiplied this through, this through, this through. Instead of having the 1, it'll all be the a's. So it'll look like f of a plus h equals 3 times a plus h quantity squared minus 4 times a plus h. And when you simplify that down, you won't have the values simplifying like we did before. Instead, you're going to have a's left. So that looks like 3a squared plus 6ah plus 3h squared. And then distributing over here, 
minus 4a minus 4h. And then when you have the f of a, it's the same as like what we had here, only it's just the a. So that will look like 3, and then you put the a in, so a squared, minus 4, put the a in, a. So putting it all together, we have the limit as h approaches 0 of, start right here, 3a squared plus 6ah plus 3h squared minus 4a minus 4h. Now be careful, we need to subtract our f of a. So that becomes minus 3a squared plus 4a when we do our subtraction and then distribute our negative. Same as before, all over h. And same as before, if it doesn't have an a, or excuse me, if it doesn't have an h, it has to cancel. So 3a squared here, minus 3a squared, minus 4a plus 4a, they cancel. Now we need to pull our h to the front, so we have our limit. As h approaches 0, pull your h to the front, so that will leave us with 6a plus 3h minus 4, all over h. Our h's will cancel, which now eliminates our division by 0, so we are okay to put the 0 in for the remaining h. So that's going to look like no limit anymore because we're putting the 0 in. So 6a, 3 times h is 3 times 0, so that's 0, minus 4. We don't have an a value, but now we have a formula for the derivative if we were given any a value. And it looks like this. Look at the one that we just solved. Right here, we were looking for f of f prime of 1. Well, if we were to put 1 in for the a, we would have 6 times 1 minus 4. 6 times 1 is 6, minus 4 is 2. So essentially what we did here is we wrote a formula for the derivative at any a value. 